Preparing for surgery can be overwhelming. You will receive a lot of information. Know that our Roger Williams Medical Center surgery team is here to help you from beginning to end. Today you will be given a booklet which includes details about getting ready for your surgery, what to expect on the day of surgery and while you are recovering in the hospital, planning for recovery and going home after surgery, what to expect once you are home. Please try to read this booklet as soon as you can. Keep track of your questions and be sure to ask your surgical team when you see them or call your surgical coordinator. It is important for you and your family and your friends to understand what to anticipate so that everyone can fully participate in your recovery. As part of your recovery, we strongly encourage following as of now to stop smoking now to reduce your risk of lung problems after surgery. Also begin today to practice taking deep breaths several times a day. Deep breathing is very important after surgery to reduce your chances of developing lung problems. In your booklet, you will have a summary checklist as a guide to what you need to do to prepare for your surgery and recovery after surgery. At your initial office visit with your surgeon, bring your medical records to your appointment with your surgeon prior to your surgery. Meet with your doctors and nurses prior to surgery to review your medical history. You will also be told if you need to stop or change any medications before your surgery. Complete your blood work at your convenient location or at Roger Williams Medical Center as ordered. Plan for management of blood thinners. Warfarin, Plavix, Aspirin will be done by your surgical team and prescribing doctor in advance of surgery if appropriate. An advanced directive can be used to name a health care agent. This is someone you trust to make health care decisions for you. It can be used to say what your preferences are about treatment that may be used to sustain your life. Advanced directives are optional. If you have an advanced directive, bring a copy to the hospital if you want to apply it to your upcoming visit or admission. An advanced directive can be removed or revised at any time. You should plan to be in the hospital for three to five days after your surgery, unless your surgeon has told you otherwise. It is likely that you will need assistance from friends or family immediately after leaving the hospital. If home assistance is limited, some patients require a brief stay in an intermediate care or rehabilitation facility. These facilities give you assistance while you regain your strength for a short period of time. This decision will be made by you along with your medical, nursing, and therapy team responsible for your care. Pick one friend or family member who can be part of your team to help you make decisions and coordinate your care before, during, and after surgery. If you do not have the assistance you will need at home, here are a few simple things you can do before coming into the hospital that may make things easier for you once you return home. In your kitchen, put the things you use often between waist and shoulder height to avoid having to bend down or reach up to reach them. Bring the things you are going to use during the day downstairs. However, realize that you will be able to climb the stairs after your surgery. Buy a stock of food and other things you will need frequently, as shopping may be difficult when you first get home. Eat a healthy diet during the period leading up to your surgery, as this helps you to recover quicker. Get plenty of exercise so that you are in good shape for your surgery. Again, if you smoke, talk to your primary care physician about the benefits of quitting. A week before your surgery, you will receive a phone call to review your medications to take the day of surgery and answer any last minute questions. You will need to ensure you have all supplies needed for your bowel prep as ordered. Ensure you have your Hippoclin soap for your skin preparation. Let me go over dietary supplements that you should take six days prior to your surgery. You are going to have 10 cartons of immunonutrition shake. Begin drinking the provided immunonutrition shake two times a day, six days prior to surgery. This will help with the healing process. You will finish this the day before surgery. You should be on a clear liquid diet the day before surgery. Please see the instructions in your booklet. If you are a diabetic, please follow the following to help manage your blood sugar levels during this period. 
Drink no more than half a carton at a time, four ounces. Drink four half carton servings evenly with meals and snacks throughout the day. Between meals and snacks, store open shakes in refrigerator. Reduce the amount of carbohydrates you consume at each meal when consuming the half carton shake. Each half carton of Ensure Surgery Shake contains 22.5 grams of carbohydrate. Use the schedule in your booklet to help keep track of your schedule. The day before your surgery, your surgeon may order a bowel prep. Usually your doctor will prescribe a bowel preparation with antibiotics to prevent infections after your surgery. You will need to purchase the following items for your bowel preparation. One bottle of Miralax powder, 238 grams. It's a laxative you can purchase over the counter. Bisocodal, five milligram tablets. It's a laxative that's also purchased over the counter. Neomycin sulfate, 500 milligram tablets, is an antibiotic you will be given a prescription from your surgeon. Erythromycin 500 milligram tablets is an antibiotic prescription you will also be getting from your surgeon. Please call our office if you have any allergies to any of the above medications or antibiotics. The morning before your surgery, you will begin the clear liquid diet at breakfast. It is important to stay well hydrated during your bowel preparation, so please drink many of the clear liquids that are allowed. These clear liquids that are allowed include water, clear broth, beef or chicken, Gatorade, lemonade or Kool-Aid, sodas, teas, or coffee with no cream, popsicles without fruit or cream, Italian ice, juices without pulp, apple, white grape juice are allowed. You may use salt, pepper, and sugar. Not allowed include milk or cream, milkshakes, tomato juice, orange juice, grapefruit juice, cream soups, or any soup other than broth. At breakfast, please begin the clear liquid diet. At 12 p.m., prepare the Miralax mix by pouring the entire bottle of powder, 238 grams, into a 32 ounce water container. Shake the bottle of liquid and powder well. This will form a slushy mixture. Place in the refrigerator to chill for one hour. You will take your first dose of antibiotics. At 1 p.m., you will take your second dose of antibiotics. 2 p.m., you will drink an eight ounce glass of Miralax every hour on the hour until finished. 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., and 5 p.m. At 6 p.m., you will take all four of your bisocodal tablets with a glass of water. At 7 p.m., be sure to drink an eight ounce glass of clear liquids every hour. 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m. After finishing the Miralax mixture, this will keep you hydrated. 8 p.m., take your third dose of antibiotics. You can play an important role in your own health. Because skin is not germ-free, your skin needs to be as free of germs as possible before your surgery. You can reduce the amount of germs on your skin by washing with Hippoclin soap containing chlorhexidine, gluconate, also known as CHG. CHG is an antiseptic cleaner, which kills germs on contact and bonds with the skin to continue killing germs even after washing. Please do not use if you have an allergy to chlorhexidine. You should not use Hippoclins if you are allergic to it. Ask your doctor or pharmacist if it is safe for you to use Hippoclins if you have any allergy to foods, dyes, animals, or medicine. When you shower, you will use half a bottle of the Hippoclin soap to shower the night before your surgery and the other half bottle to shower the morning of your surgery. With each shower, wash your hair as usual with normal shampoo. Rinse your hair and body thoroughly after you shampoo your hair to remove the shampoo. Use Hippoclin soap as you would any other liquid soap. You can apply it directly to the skin, wash gently, or use a washcloth. Apply the Hippoclins to your entire body from the neck down, being careful not to get any in your eyes or ears. With each shower, wash thoroughly, paying special attention to the area where your surgery will be performed. Thoroughly rinse your body with warm water after each shower. 
With each shower, do not wash with your regular soap after using and rinsing off the Hippoclean soap. Pat yourself dry with a clean towel. Do not apply lotions, deodorants, powders, perfumes, or moisturizer. Change your bed sheets prior to going to bed the night before your surgery and do not share your bed with any of your pets. Do not shave or otherwise remove any body hair on your abdomen prior to your surgery. Your doctors and nurses will remove body hair near the surgical site with an electric hair clipper prior to surgery if needed. After midnight, do not eat any mints or candy or chew gum the night before your surgery. The morning of your surgery, take your medications with a sip of water no later than two hours before your scheduled surgery time. You may continue to drink clear liquids up to two hours before your surgery scheduled time. Do not forget to drink the bottle of Ensure pre-surgery clear carbohydrate drink two hours before your surgery scheduled time. Do not eat any solid food or drink any thicker liquids like milk or pulped juices or add cream to any clear liquids. Take a shower with the special soap. What can you bring to the hospital? Leave all your valuables at home or give to the person accompanying you. We encourage you to only bring essential items the morning of surgery, including your insurance cards, personal identification cards, copy of your advanced directive, a list of all of your medications, including dosages and how often you take them, and your booklet that you will be given today. Payment or any deductible or copayment that is due before the operation. Please be aware that there may be some downtime or wait prior to your surgery. We will do our best to predict how long the operation of the day may take, but unexpected delays are sometimes unavoidable. Therefore, bring a book or something to do while you wait. Computers, tablets, and cell phones are allowed in the hospital. However, the hospital is not responsible for money or valuables, including electronics, unless it is surrendered to be secured in the hospital safe. Internet access is available. Towels and gowns will be provided, but many people like to bring their own freshly laundered bathrobe and toiletries. We will give you all of your medicines needed for your recovery. Leave your medications at home. It is best to have your family or friends bring these personal belongings to you after surgery. Do not pack non-essential valuable items. On the morning of surgery, you're gonna to wanna to wear loose, comfortable clothing. Do not wear any jewelry. This includes your wedding ring, earrings, or any other body piercings. All jewelry must be removed before surgery. To ensure a smooth registration process, please arrive 90 minutes prior to your surgery schedule. It is important to allow ample time for parking and walking to your check-in desk. You will report to the ambulatory surgery waiting room. Roger Williams Medical Center, East Entrance, 825 Chalkstone Avenue, Providence, Rhode Island, 02908. The ambulatory surgery department is located on the right side of the hospital. Park on the right side of the lot, enter through the hospital glass doors of the East Entrance. If you have questions about where to report on the day of surgery, please contact your surgical coordinator. Once your team is ready, you and one member of your family, if desired, will be brought to the pre-surgery area. Here, the nurses and anesthesia providers will check you in and make sure everything is set for your surgery. An intravenous catheter will be placed in your arm and your weight will be measured. You will also be given several medications to help you with your pain and nausea during and after surgery, if appropriate for your procedure. The anesthesia provider will perform an epidural anesthetic by using a small needle to inject medicine directly into the fibers of your back. This is important because we like to minimize the amounts of narcotics such as oxycodone or Dilaudid that reduce pain but can cause constipation and nausea after colorectal surgery. The use of these narcotics can significantly delay your recovery after surgery. You will then be taken to surgery and your family will be taken back out to the patient family lounge. Once in the operating room, many patients do not recall being in the operating room because of the medications you were given during surgery that causes them amnesia. You will be connected to monitors. After this, you will be given a blood thinner shot to prevent you from getting blood clots. You will also be given antibiotics to help prevent a wound infection. 
the anesthesiologist will put you to sleep with a general anesthetic. Once you are asleep, your surgeon will begin your surgery. After surgery, you will be taken to the recovery room where you will wake up from anesthesia. Once awake and stable, you will be given water or juice to drink. The surgeon will talk with your family immediately following surgery and let them know about the operation. Most patients remain in the recovery room for about two hours. If you are in the recovery room for more than two hours, you will sit in a chair in the recovery room as it is very important to get you up and moving as soon as possible after surgery. This will speed up your recovery and also helps to prevent you from getting blood clots or pneumonia. Immediately after surgery, you will be given oxygen. You will wear the oxygen mask that is placed over your mouth for two hours in the recovery room. Pain management medications will be given to you to manage your pain. If you are concerned about any of the medications or are still experiencing pain, speak up to your nurses. From the recovery room, you will be sent to one of the surgical units. You will be reunited with your family once you are on the unit. This is a good time for your family to bring you your belongings that you had packed at home. The receptionist in the family lounge will tell your family which room number you are in. A family member or companion can stay with you in the room. Visiting hours are between 4 and 8 p.m. and reclining chairs are available for visitors to sleep on. In most cases, you will have a small tube in your bladder. This is so we can measure how much urine you are making and how well your kidneys are working. You may also be given oxygen. You will have a drip in your arm, giving you fluid into your vein. You will be allowed to drink immediately. You will be placed on your regular medications, except for some diabetic, blood pressure, and blood thinning medications. You will receive a low dose of blood thinner medication to help prevent blood clots through an injection. The nurse staff will help you out of bed. The staff will check your temperature, pulse, and blood pressure regularly when you first come up to the unit. Only close friends or family are advised to visit on this day, as you will be quite drowsy. In addition to the nursing staff on the unit, the surgery team will care for you. This team is led by your surgeon and includes a fellow, a physician assistant, or nurse practitioner. There will be a physician in the hospital 24 hours a day to tend to your needs. The surgical team report directly to your surgeon, who is overseeing all of your care. Your pain will be assessed regularly on a scale up from 0 to 10. Pain assessment is necessary to guide your pain relief. It is essential that you are able to take deep breaths and cough and move. Prevention or early treatment of pain is far more effective than trying to treat severe pain. Therefore, we have devised a special regimen to stay ahead of your pain and use almost no narcotics, which can shut down your recovery process. If you have an epidural catheter, you will receive a constant infusion of pain medication through your epidural. You will be given acetaminophen and an ibuprofen-like medication to keep your pain under control, along with a lidocaine patch placed close to your incision. You can always ask for additional pain medication if you are not comfortable. In most cases, an anesthesiologist with expertise in pain management will visit you every day and help design your pain management plan. On your first day after your surgery, you will be expected to spend at least six hours out of your bed and walk at least twice in the hall. You will drink clear liquids as you feel up to it. You may be offered soft or solid foods if you feel well and as your surgeon recommends. You may be disconnected from intravenous fluids. Ask your nurse if some or all of the intravenous tubes attached to your arms or hands can be removed. Pain management medications will be given to you to manage your pain. If you are concerned about any of the medications or are still experiencing pain, talk with your nurses. Your urinary catheter may be removed. Ask if this is not addressed by your team. If you have an ostomy, participate in your ostomy care. Work with your nurse to understand how to care for yourself after discharge. You will also meet with a case manager to assess your discharge needs, including home nursing. Your physician may order home care to assist you with your transition home. Home nursing visits can help you readjust to home by teaching you treatments, monitoring medications, and performing clinical assessments and reporting back to your physician. Other services may include therapy and medical equipment. If you're going somewhere other than your home upon discharge, please let your care team know. 
Your second day after surgery, you will be expected to spend at least six hours out of bed and walk at least three times in the hallway. If your surgeon approves and orders, you'll be placed on a soft diet and will advance to more solid food as you feel up to it. Pain management medications will be given to you to manage your pain. If you are concerned about any of the medications or are still experiencing pain, talk with your nurses. Your urinary catheter will be removed if not already done so. Ask if this has not been addressed by your care team. If you have an ostomy, ask your nurse to teach you how to empty your ostomy bag and care for the skin around your stoma. Ask your nurse how to measure the ostomy liquid output. Ask your nurse or doctor to tell you what you can do at home to keep from getting dehydrated due to the removal of all or part of your colon. On your third day after surgery, you will be expected to spend much of the day out of bed and up walking. If your surgeon orders, you may start to eat solid food. Your pain should be well controlled on pain medications. Talk to your care team about how to manage your pain at home. If your surgeon orders, discharge planning may begin. You are all ready to be discharged if you are drinking and eating well with no nausea and passing gas and your pain is well controlled. Talk to your nurse about signs and symptoms of infection and what to do if you think you have an infection once you are home. Talk to your nurse about which actions you can take to prevent dehydration after you leave the hospital. If you have an ostomy, talk with your nurse about which foods you can eat to make your ostomy output thicker and prevent dehydration. Demonstrate how to remove and apply a new ostomy bag. Check that you have ostomy supplies for use at home. Learn how to order additional supplies so you do not run out of supplies at home. Before you leave the hospital, you should have hospital discharge instructions. An outpatient appointment with your surgeon within one to two weeks of discharge. Any medication prescriptions you may need. A hospital bag containing all ostomy supplies if needed and a plan for how to get additional supplies delivered to your home. Some complications that may prolong your hospital stay. Nausea and vomiting. It is very common to feel sick to your stomach after your surgery. We give you medication to reduce this. However, if you do feel sick, you should reduce the amount of food and drink you are taking by mouth. Small, frequent meals or drinks are best in this situation. As long as you can drink and keep yourself hydrated, the nausea will likely pass. Ileus. Following surgery, the bowel can shut down, making it difficult for food and gas to pass through the intestines. This is called an ileus. We have designed on our care program to do everything possible to reduce the likelihood of an ileus. If you do develop an ileus, it usually only lasts two to three days. However, it may require a small tube down your nose to decompress the stomach. The best way to avoid an ileus is to reduce the amount of narcotic pain medication and get up as much as possible after your surgery. This will stimulate the bowel early after surgery with small amounts of food and liquid. Anastomic leak. This is a rare but serious complication. Anastomic leak usually develops five to seven days after surgery and it happens when two ends of the bowel that were joined together fail to heal completely, thus leaving a small hole. Patients usually have severe abdominal pain, fever, and vomiting. This often requires another operation. A wound infection may occur. If a wound infection develops, this usually happens three to 10 days after surgery. Urinary retention. This is if you are unable to urinate after the catheter from your bladder is removed. The catheter may need to be reinserted until you are able to urinate on your own. This can be caused by anesthesia, pain medication, and decreased activity. Once you are home, call us anytime if you are worried about your recovery. Call us immediately if you have a fever higher than 101.5 degrees. If your wound is red or more painful or has drainage. If you are nauseated or vomiting or cannot keep liquids down. If your pain is worse and not able to be controlled with the regimen you are sent home with. If you are running low on any medications, call the nurse a few days before you will run out. 
It is generally easier to reach someone during the day, so call early if you think something is not right. A nurse or a nurse practitioner is available every day to answer questions. After hours and on the weekends, the calls go to the fellows in the hospital. It may take longer for your phone call to be returned during this time. If you have a true emergency, such as severe abdominal pain, chest pain, shortness of breath, or any other problems, call 911 or go to the local emergency room. Have them contact our team once you are stable. Some concerns you may have after your discharge. Your bowels will take several weeks to settle down and may be unpredictable at first. Your bowel movements may become loose or you may be constipated. For the vast number of patients, this will get back to normal with time. Make sure you eat nutritious meals, drink plenty of fluids, and take regular walks during the first two weeks after your operation. It is not unusual to suffer gripping pains or colic during the first week following removal of portion of your bowel. This pain usually lasts for only a few minutes but goes away between spasms. If you have severe pain lasting more than two hours or have a fever and are feeling generally unwell, you should contact us at the telephone contact numbers listed at the end of this booklet. Diarrhea may be a concern for you. The first step to improving your frequent or loose stools is to bulk up the stool with food by adding things like peanut butter, marshmallows, bread, and bananas to your diet. The second step to improving your frequent or loose stools is to add a fiber supplement. Metamucil is a common type of fiber that is available at any drugstore. Start with one teaspoon mixed into your foods like yogurt or oatmeal in the morning and evening. Try not to drink any fluid for one hour after you have taken the fiber. This will allow for the fiber to act like a sponge in your intestines, soaking up the excess water. Continue this for three to five days. You may increase by one teaspoon every three to five days until the desired effect, or you are one tablespoon, which is three teaspoons twice a day. If this does not work, you may try over-the-counter Imodium, which is an anti-diarrheal medication. You may take one tablet in the morning and evening or 30 minutes before you typically have diarrhea. You may take up to eight of these tablets daily. It is best to discuss this with us prior to using this medication. If you have continuous diarrhea and abdominal cramping, please call us. After your bowel surgery, you may get a feeling that your bladder is not emptying fully. This usually resolves with time. However, if there are concerns, please call us. For the first few weeks following your surgery, your wound may be slightly red and uncomfortable. You may shower and let the soapy water wash over your incision. Avoid soaking in a tub for one month following your surgery or until the wound is well healed. It will take the wound several months to soften. It is common to have bumpy areas in the wound near the belly button and at the ends of the incision. If you have staples, these should be removed when you are seen by your surgeon at the follow-up appointment. You may have a glue-like material on your incision. Do not pick at this. It will come off over time. It is a surgical glue used in surgery to close your incision. You may also have sutures inside of you that will dissolve over time. Attention to good nutrition after surgery is important to your recovery. If you had no dietary restrictions prior to your surgery, you will have no special dietary restrictions after the surgery. However, consuming enough protein, calories, vitamins, and minerals is necessary to support healing. Some patients find their appetite is less than normal after surgery. In this case, frequent small meals throughout the day may help. It is not uncommon to lose 10 to 15 pounds after surgery. However, by the fourth to fifth week, your weight loss should stabilize. It is normal that certain foods may taste different and certain smells may make you nauseous. Over time, the amount you can comfortably consume will gradually increase. You should try to eat a balanced diet which includes foods that are soft, moist, and easy to chew and swallow, canned or soft fruits and vegetables, 
plenty of soft breads, rice, pasta, potatoes, and other starchy foods. Low fiber varieties may be tolerated better initially. High protein foods and beverages such as meats, eggs, milk, cottage cheese, or a supplemental nutritional drink like Boost or Ensure. Drink plenty of fluids, at least eight to 10 cups a day. This includes water, fruit juice, Gatorade, teas, coffee, and milk. Drinking plenty is especially important if you have loose stools. Avoid drinking a lot of caffeine since this will dehydrate you. Avoid fried, greasy, and highly seasoned or spicy foods. Avoid carbonated beverages in the first couple weeks. Avoid raw fruits. Walking around after your surgery once you are home is important. You should plan to undertake regular exercise several times a day and gradually increase this during the four weeks following your operation until you are back to your normal level of activity. You may climb stairs. Do not do heavy lifting greater than 10 pounds or contact sports for the first month after surgery. Generally, you can return to hobbies and activities soon after your surgery. This will help you recover. It can take up to two to three months to fully recover. It is not unusual to be fatigued and require an afternoon nap for up to six to eight weeks following your surgery. Your body is using this energy to heal your wounds. Set small goals for yourself and try to do a little more each day. It is normal to return to work four to six weeks following your operation. If your job involves heavy manual work, then you should wait six weeks. However, you should check with your employer regarding rules, which may be relevant to your return to work. If you need a return to work form from your employer or disability papers, bring them to your follow-up appointment or fax them to our office. You may drive when you are off narcotics and pain-free enough to react quickly when breaking your foot. For most patients, this occurs three to four weeks after your surgery.